What's up, YouTube? Alex here, aka Inch95, aka Arnold Schwarzenegger. He says, put that cookie down now. <laughs> that shit's hilarious. You guys know what movie that's from? Comment down below and I'll try to give you a shout out in the next video. That shit is freaking hilarious. In any case, I'm here to do, uh, I guess, a discussion or just a quick look at uh, the meta game after the March 1st format, after regionals have passed, because I know today is March 3rd, if you guys can't already tell, today's March 3rd. Um, yesterday was March 2nd, and yesterday a lot, all over the country, there was uh, regionals all over the U.S. I'm sure other, you know, probably like Puerto Rico or, you know, other places like that also had regionals, but I know um, there's at least seven to eight regionals, and I wanted to talk about them. Um, and, and what they kind of suggest, uh, right off the bat for this new format, um, prior to the release of, uh, Lord of Tachyon or whatever it is, the, the next set, Lord of Tachyon, if I'm not mistaken, is what it's called. Um, and, and how the format is going to, to at least be trended towards, um, or kind of, you know, some of the trends that are going on right now. Um, I know there, like I said, there was about seven or eight regionals. Um, after, after all these regionals, there was, uh, Probably, probably the general consensus is that Mermails are the best deck. Out of all the out of the seven regionals that at least I was aware of on Duelist Grounds, I got a lot of my info from Duelist Grounds, um, some of the players on DGZ players top there. Out of about 26 uh, Mermail decks total, um, I believe about a little over half of those, because some of them were, uh, were not stated. Um, I, I didn't really, I was supposed to hit up Cordero, because I know he has some of the counts. I, I think he posted them on Facebook and whatnot as well. But uh, some a lot of people didn't clarify. But about out of twenty six mermail decks, at least uh, at least fourteen to sixteen plus of those, because just some of them were just said mermail decks, and they didn't clarify it was undyne or without undyne um, or mono mermails as they're more commonly known now. Um, a little over half of those were uh, were were mono mermail, which a lot of people are just saying that the general consensus is that that's the best deck. Um, but just mermails in general, just for the sake of argument, because at certain regionals there was like uh, I believe two regionals. Where let's say one had um, you know three three mono mermail decks top and one undyne, another one had like three undyne versions, but like one one mono mermail or like two and one or three and one or four and one or just four in general, you know. So, so there's there's a lot of mix and match there, but that's probably the general consensus that uh you know a lot of a lot of players are opting to run this deck. It's a really good deck nonetheless. Um, then you know regardless of what people say, um. Obviously, a lot of more people are trending now towards to the Abysteus, uh, Abysteus over the Undyne version, um, and that's mainly just because of popularity. I think that Miami it actually did really well at Miami, but obviously it was just like one one player that did really well, which was obviously obviously Billy Brake. He collaborated with Jeff Jones. Everybody knows the whole chin dig. He did really well, and uh, it kind of caught fire. Um, I think Abysteus was good before that. I mean, I, I guess people just didn't really pick it up. But in any in any case. Um, people are kind of just hopping on this just because, uh, he did well with it, which I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that because, uh, people were arguing that this deck has a better matchup and, uh, in mirror match because you can do Gaios and all this stuff, but I personally feel that the Undyne version is a little bit better. Um, it's more consistent in terms of, um, in terms of the plays that you can do. It's a little bit more explosive. Um, the Bistius is kind of like, um, you, you have to have something else for him to resolve, you know, whereas Undyne... Um, you can just plop it down and get an instant plus two, which is ridiculous. And as well as um, as well as that in mirror match, you can just pop their abyss Gaios instantaneously. Whereas in if you're playing mono mermail mirror match and the first player to get out an abyss Gaios, it's gonna be really tough on the other player if they don't have something like dark hole or uh, I don't know, like they're, they're just like it, it's so tough to get out of um, an abyss Gaios if you don't have that undyne because um, you can just dump infantry and go for it. So I mean, I personally like the undyne version better. But uh, it's probably time will tell. I think that after uh, Evil Swarms pick up, you know, with Ophi on this card, this one's this version is gonna be better because you can just infantry pop, and I think people are gonna start running three infantries um, pretty soon. So uh, yeah, Mermail is probably the best deck right now out of you know the general consensus what this format is leaning leaning to. Um, other decks that were really notable as far as um, in each regional, I noticed that pretty much every regional had at least one um, Machina or or machine type deck, whether it be Machinas, whether it be Girgias, uh, or Machina Girgia, you know, like a mixture of those. I know two of them had uh, Karkuri Girgia, some of them had Girgia or Karkuri, that instant fusion version that topped, or just gadgets or whatever. Um, each each regional has had at least one of those. Um, I know one regional is Paul Cooper, I believe, topped. Um, with Heretics, he did he topped again, he's pretty good. Uh, Firefist did actually, they did, 
they did well, but uh, there was a couple regionals where they just were, were not nowhere to be nowhere to be seen as far as uh, the dominant force that they could potentially be. Um, I know if I'm not mistaken, there are one. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to out of all the numbers. One. Yeah, <laughs> there's only one on this page. Let me, like, I'm sorry, I'm on dual grounds. Dual grounds is taking a while to load. Uh, dual. Uh, so there's one. One regional's had four fire decks, which was pretty impressive. Um, I know the Chicago regional only had one, so the Edison regional, they had four or five fire decks, something like that. Um, England had one. Uh, Oklahoma had none. Orlando had none. And Houston, I believe, had one or two, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, I don't think Houston had any. The Houston regionals, I believe, had no fire decks. So there's really only like a total of maybe six, six probably fire decks at the top, six to seven fire decks total. Uh, give or take. Uh, some of them are kind of mix and match because I know, I think one of them on Duelist Grounds was posted. It was a uh, the Fire King version or some shit like that. It was it was kind of gimmicky, but in any case, um, I think the, the, that deck, um, I don't want to say underperformed, but I felt it should have been d done better at more regionals um, just because, you know, I think like Orlando, Utah, um, I think Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken, and either Chicago or whatever, I, I believe none of those had any Fire decks that topped um, so yeah, I think that kind of, that kind of shows that Fire Fist aren't as insanely great as they, as people claim to be. Um, but they do have potential. They're still a great deck nonetheless. They can still pump out pluses really easily. They have a lot of great battle tricks, which, uh, that's actually probably the one flaw, believe it or not, that I feel with the deck, the battle trick thing. I mean, that, that's, that battle trick thing hasn't really been good since, uh, you know, since the Honest Kalut Ages and then prior to that Gladiator Beast, you know, the whole tagging in and out, the mechanic of battling to... To resolve a lot of your effects and to, to to take advantage of the opponent, so you know a lot of the time you know uh, those tricks are kind of I don't want to say outdated, but I mean they're they're reliant on something occurring. You know, it's they're, they're kind of the reactive plays. Um, you know, you either want to wait for your opponent's attack or you have to attack to do something. You know, to do your tensin, you do you know, all your little all your little shenanigans with that deck. On the opposing side, uh, we also saw I believe a couple rabbit decks, which uh, most of them were just pr basically just macro macro rabbit um i know there was a uh, one unique fire rabbit dot deck it was kind of a weird fire fist rabbit deck it wasn't weird but i know uh, a lot of people aren't exactly running the like the excess vanillas and stuff with this deck but uh you know in fire fist and whatnot but i think rabbit seemed to do pretty well they took at least uh if i'm not mistaken one spot in every regionals except the edison and the what other regionals was it here let me check it was on probably on page two and I believe the Oklahoma City Regionals, or okay, Oklahoma Regionals. Um, so I believe those two Regionals were the only um, Regionals that lacked a single Rabbit deck in top. But um, Rabbit, Rabbit is still a huge factor. I've been playing testing against it, and uh, it's just kind of annoying because the people that I play tested with the past couple nights have been drawing insanely broken. It's beyond me how, like, literally yesterday, I played against four back-to-back -back, um, Rabbit decks in a row, and it was on Dueling Network, and, and then before that, throughout the day with, like, friends at Locals. It was insane to watch people literally, I felt like I was playing Dino Rabbit like two formats ago. Like literally, they were drawing, they were pointlessly like wasting their tour guides and they were just plopping down tour guides, rabbits, Solemn Judgment, Heavy Storm, the one warning. Everybody drew their one warning against me, which was kind of annoying, but you know, everybody was just drawing one of cards. So, I mean, the deck has still has a huge sack factor and it's really frustrating the fact that this deck is still doing well. Um, I, I just don't really like this deck, honestly. Like it's, it's so linear minded, like it's so, it's not versatile in plays. But uh, it's it's very powerful nonetheless, especially if you can draw really well with it. Uh, it it's it's that's just how the deck works. I mean, even if you you can do a couple grind out games with like vanillas and stuff, but you know it's it, it's it's nothing shy of uh, impressive, I would say, for this format because I'm just kind of surprised. Like it seemed like it underperforms at the highest competitive level because you're going to be playing a multitude of people. You're not going to be able to sack out of every game that you draw, and you're not always going to be able to outdraw people when you're in those uh, grind out game scenarios. Um, I know people were hoping that those new wind-up loop decks would, uh, you know, do well at these regionals. I think only one wind-up deck topped out of the entire regionals, and this was posted on Facebook, so I, I think I actually, hold on, uh, I think it was, oh, oh well, shout-outs to Cordero, I guess he, <laughs> I'm literally on my newsfeed, and that's the top deck that was posted. Apparently a lot of people, that's trending, but, um, I guess one wind-up player took that Summoner Monk strategy with, like, without a heavy storm or something, and went undefeated, which, props to him, but, uh, it seems really unrealistic in terms of, uh, I guess, either the player base that he played or the way he drew or the way his opponents drew or whatever, because that's really realistically not going to happen in a, in a you know, 12-plus round 
uh, or not eleven plus round, or like nine to eleven round regionals, and here in like California, like that that's probably just not going to happen, you know. So I mean, it was probably like a six or seven round regionals. I'm assuming um, it was probably like a seven round regionals, if anything. I'm, you know, it was only like three hundred fifty players, I believe, something like that. But uh, props to that guy. Um, there's no really other decks to, that are really mention worthy. I know people were expecting Samurais to do well. I think they only took like one spot at one regionals. I think a Watt deck topped, uh, I believe it was Oklahoma and a GB deck, which you guys know me. I just, I love the GBs, you know, I always have a GB deck made. So, I mean, props to the, props to the GB guy, you know, GBs, GBs for like, oh, no, 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 don't make me fail on camera. No, no, where are they? GBs, GBs, queefs, queefs. GBs for life, you know, that's how we do. I always have a GB deck tucked away. You guys know me. I, I love the Glads. They just, they just, I love Glads. They're just uh, an amazing deck. Love it. Lick it like you love it, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think those are the only notable things. Um, I, I would like to do maybe another meta follow-up once Lord of the Tachyon comes out. Um, I know a lot of people are trying a lot of fun decks this format, just because this format's really diverse. I believe it or not, personally, I don't like this format except for Mermails. If it wasn't for Mermails, I probably would not be playing this format, especially once Lord of the Tachyon comes out, because I know uh, people people are going to be hopping on that prophecy shit, and uh, you know, once Evil Swarms come out, it's going to be a really tough grind-out game for Mermails, so people aren't going to be able to talk shit all the time. Oh my god, it's, it's autopilot. Like, I feel with Mermails, believe it or not, most of the time, I feel like the Undyne version is less... Um, quote-unquote Saki or whatever than the Abystheus version because the Abystheus version you just plop down monsters and then you exceed and you do your poking plays and all that garbage. Whereas the Undyne version, I feel like um, there's a lot more critical thinking involved in terms of searching. I feel like Mermails, believe it or not, it's like one of those decks where, uh, where like if you make a critical misplay, it's not like you can just outdraw your way out of that or you can come back from that. A lot of critical misplays make you lose with the deck, which is the one reason why I really like it. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, as I was saying, I feel like Mermails right now is, um, aside from the the Abysteus version, which I feel, I, I just like, I don't really like the Abysteus version, it just, it feels really weird to me, it feels, I draw really cloggy with it, but um, it, it feels like a deck where you have to ha be able to think three turns in advance with your searching, you know, a lot of people I see misplaying all the time, all the time, it's so insane how many times I see people misplaying with their searches, like, they'll add like a marksman for like five turns from now and they'll be like, ah, oh, shit, well now they have a big ass beater on board and I can't get rid of it because I added a marksman instead of an infantry or I didn't add a diva to make a comeback power play or something like that, you know? Um, and then another reason why I really don't like the Abysteus version is the lack of Moulin Glacia. Um, yeah, I mean, it can be inconsistent at times, but, but it, it's really easy to make Moulin Glacia. Like the fact that you have salvages and avarice and, you know, grave control at that deck and it, it's just insane, you know, Moulin Glacia, it, it, most of the time, Moulin Glacia wins you games, like, if you if you can successfully resolve a Moulin Glacia, you can win games, because a lot of decks have to utilize so many resources to, um, you know, to even attempt to hinder um, Mermail player strategies, so, I mean, if, if a Mermail player resolves a Moulin Glacia, you may as well just go on to the next game, or, I mean, I, I, I never say scoop, I never advocate scooping, because there's always a chance, but, uh, uh, like, I think that once Evil Swarms are released on April 19th, once they're illegal from the dual terminal shit, because I know people are playing at locals, which is kind of annoying, but I guess you may as well get used to it, which I kind of have to bear the burden of that here in California, but <laughs> in any case, um, I, I saw no Prophecy decks top any of these regionals, um, and no, I don't want to hear that top 32, top 48, top 60,000 billion um, I, uh, top eight is really what matters. I don't really care aside from that. Top eight is what's critical at these events, um, especially because most of the events like these regional wise at a competitive level are not California regionals. So you really only want to look at the top eight because I mean, whereas like in California, we get anywhere from you know, like seven, eight, we can we can get up to like seven hundred people regionals. Like that's insane, if not more. Like we can get seven, eight hundred people regionals easily if we wanted to. I mean, there's. Uh, how many people did the LA one have? I think the LA one didn't. Didn't one of the recent LA ones have like over a thousand people? If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. It, it was up there. Like it was up there. They we have to have cap space at our regionals here in California. Like, that tells you how huge they are. So I mean, if a player goes X two and doesn't top and gets like twenty second place with like a lot deck or some shit, like that's pretty impressive for a California regionals. Considering we're arguably one of the most competitive metas, if not the most competitive metas in the game. So I mean, that's the one thing that I wanted to point out when you're when you're analyzing these regionals. Um, take it with a grain of salt. Don't take it for, uh, um, don't take it, not ne not necessarily for granted, but don't, don't take it as like, oh, this is set in stone. Don't take it for, oh, this is great. Oh, some, uh, I don't know, some dark magician of, dark black magician of chaos ritual dot deck, um, with, um, running Moki Moki's topped 
46,000th place or whatever out of Houston Regionals and wasn't even able to enter. And it, it's so good. Oh, my God. It's it's great. It got close to topping. Like, no, you don't want to look at it that way. Um, so, yeah, that's really what I wanted to talk about. Um, I think that uh, other decks, you know, maybe this deck, I don't know, not Heretics, I don't know, maybe Hazy Flames with the re release of uh, Constellar uh, Ptolemies and whatnot, the Rank 6s and whatnot, is going to get a little bit of a boost, maybe offer some more plays, some, uh, some more critical combos with this deck that have a ton of potential. Um... But as far as that, I, I don't really know what else to say about this regionals. I also, like I was going, I forgot to mention uh, about Samurais. I didn't really finish my thought on that. Um, people were expecting them to be insanely good. Oh my god, you got a smoke signal as if you couldn't already make um, Barkeon Beast or Sheen turn one. Like, I don't know, it, it's asceticism that drives that deck, it seems, lately. Asceticism in Gateway. Like, I, I still can't believe Gateway's still around. Like, that's... That card's stupid. Like, are you just gonna give him like a pointless boost and still leave like gateway? Like that. That's just kind of annoying to me. Like it's a it's a free it's a free reinforcement of the army. Like how can reinforcement of the army and all these other cards that like single like single searcher cards be at one, but fucking like smoke signals at three? Like come on now, that that's kind of stupid. And they have freaking three united gateway. Like that's that's stupid, you know. Like and they have dojos too, which which a lot of people still use. But I don't really like that deck. I think it's pretty easy to beat, but it, it is frustrating at times when you have to play an uphill battle against that deck. But, uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to speculate on, on regionals. I think, uh, the format's not clearly defined yet in terms of, uh, competitive play, sim competitive play simply because of Lord of the Tachyon not being released. So, uh, yeah, I think o only time will tell. I mean, I know that Judgment Spellbook card is retardedly busted. I've actually beaten that deck a couple times playing against it. Um, I haven't really lost to it. I think I lost to it, like, once or twice when I just drew garbage, um, in a Mermel matchup with it. Um, like I said, I know Evil Swarms are gonna be a tough, tough matchup to beat, but I've been playing against it with re at, like, here, um, at Locals, I know a lot of people kind of want to use that dual terminal shit just because it's quote-unquote legal because we have a dual terminal machine. Um, I haven't really, like, I think I lost it, like, once, and I wasn't really, I was, I was playing for a friend, and he was using, like, a half-done Mermel deck, and I still almost won, I just drew double controller, unfortunately. But, uh, I've beaten the deck, I mean, Evil Swarms doesn't seem really too hard to beat. Um, they side in Soul Drains, which, I mean... You know, you have Dust, dust Tornadoes, Heavy, MSTs to take care of. And that's when I think the Undyne version would be better. When You know, you can just instantly Undyne, um... You can instantly Undyne an Ophion, which is... Which is retarded, you know? Like, if they can resolve a Rabbit, that's fine. But the Infestation spell card is pretty broke. So, uh... I think, uh, you know, cards like Snowman Eater and whatnot, those cards will be, um... Great to hinder that play. Uh, Snowman Eater is really good. I think he's gonna get better again. He's gonna have his, um... His time to shine once more. So, uh, yeah... That's really all I wanted to state. Uh, not sure what else I can talk about at a competitive level in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I'm, ha I'm having uh, some kind of difficulties trying to figure out what videos I want to film. I have a pro player video idea. I actually have two. The first one is um, a cool way to uh, actually stay focused in Yu-Gi-Oh during games and a really cool, neat trick um, that you guys could potentially use in finding your own neat niche in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and then the other, the other thing I wanted to talk about is... Uh, your mother got I completely blanked out on what the last thing was and what the second video idea was well if someone remembers that was in my live stream yesterday let me know um I think it was also it was either like keeping a a good mindset in terms of um keeping like a competitive outlook on the game you don't want to like you basically don't want to to not think that you're gonna be the best or you're gonna oh it was actually I remember what it was on it was practicing how to practice and play test in Yu-Gi-Oh the correct way and a, a little bit of a discussion on that. So you guys can either have that discussion or a really neat trick to help you guys focus in-game and possibly mitigate your misplays. So I think you guys be, it would benefit a lot of you guys. It's tricks that I use all the time. Um, and I, and I, I think it would be great for me to share them. You know, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a long time since this game's been out, and I really feel like th there's a lot of things that people don't look at. You know, it's the, it's the little things that count. It's not the, oh my god, I'm running some busted deck and uh, I'll hope to draw, you know, hope to draw the nuts. If I don't, oh well, I'll draw, I, I'll conform to that YOLO mentality. No, you don't want to go about it that way. But uh, I'll be discussing more of those. Let me know what video you guys want to see. Um, I might be on Dueling Network that the day today. I don't think I have any locals today. At least I don't, there's no, like, big things going on. Um, it's, it's only Sunday, unfortunately. I have a lot of work and this week's going to be pretty hectic for me. So, yeah. I love each and every one of you guys. Uh, comment down below if you guys enjoyed this video and this meta analysis. If you guys want me to do another one in the next couple months once Lord of the Lord of the Tachyon comes out. I'll try to do one of these each month 
and kind of evaluate, you know, regionals, kind of evaluate all these different things. Um, and in my my thought process, looking at these things and how I analyze them, because I think a lot of people don't really do that. You have to you have to have a lot of critical analysis and I guess deductive reasoning when it comes to this game. Believe it or not, it, it's it seems more overcomplicated than it is, but it re it really does. I mean, if you really think about it and you dissect the game, um, you, you guys will probably see what I what I mean. So in any case, um, thumbs up this video if you guys enjoyed it. Peace. And uh, let me know what video you guys want to see next. If you guys want to see one of those two pro players, I want you guys to vote on that down below. If you guys want to add me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, check out down below. I have all my links there. Follow me. I barely have any followers on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And I hardly have any um, page likes or you know followers or whatever on my page up here. Uh, let me see if I can show that on my uh, Facebook fan page. I know Cordero and... All those other people have like a thousand plus like likes on here and people are just following and it's trending and whatnot, but I don't have any of that, so I guess I gotta promote this more. So go, please go check it out. Um, I, I keep a lot of cool info on here. I post a lot of my links when I post a new video. I post a bunch of like random stuff like playing Pokemon and I know some of you guys all enjoy that stuff. Um, yeah, so that's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, yep, peace you guys and uh, let me know what you guys want to see next if you guys enjoyed this video. Later.